Hi, I'm Jerry Lipkin at Valley National Bank. We believe consumers need help understanding the complex banking and financial issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Valley National Bank. Cone Resnick, Accounting Tax and Advisory, where forward thinking creates results. Hackensack Meridian Health. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, The Fidelco Group, and by ShopRite Supermarkets. Promotional support provided by Commerce Magazine, and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got this? this? Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We're on the campus of uh, Ramapo College. We just finished up uh, taping the Rustbury Awards for Making a Difference, the Rustbury Making a Difference Award, the 20th anniversary, a very special year today. Uh, we honored and recognized the foundation, the Rustbury Foundation, President Angelica Berry, the team, the trustees, they honored so many amazing people. We got to talk to those folks, all kinds of nonprofits, all kinds of unsung heroes. Um, we're recognized. So we talked to those folks on camera. They all make a difference. Our role every year when we do this, our objective is to try to inspire you to make a difference in the lives of others. And I'm confident this next half hour will get you to see that you can and should be making a difference in the life of someone else. Check it out. Chief Vincent Mann is the proud recipient of the $50,000 Rust Berry Board for Making a Difference. We are honored to uh, be joined by the, the $50,000 uh, Rust Berry winner for Making a Difference, uh, Chief um, Vincent Mann, who, uh, by the way, you were the last person introduced when I was standing up there and I knew, because I had the script, you did not know that you were the final $50,000 winner. You didn't know, did you? No, absolutely not. Uh, truly an honor and an uh, amazing thing. You know, uh, to be honored to be an unsung hero, uh, knowing that, you know, the lives that have been lost um, in my community and, uh, you know, what we're standing up for to fight for and protecting the water for 4 million people, uh, it is a shock. You know, and uh, it's my hope that this will continue uh, to grow, and I expect that I will be a, uh, an advocate supporter of the Russ Barry Foundation, uh, continue being a supporter of Ramapo College as well. So, Chief, tell us a little bit about your tribe, your people, and why we need to understand them. Um, I am the Turtle Clan uh, Chief of the Ramapo Lenape Nation. We are the descendants of the Muncie which was also a clan of the Lenape as a whole. Um, what's important to know is the history of the Ramapo and everything we've been involved with from, you know, the 900 cannonballs to uh, the steel from the Ringwood Mines, right, uh, that was used in every war from the Revolutionary War to World War I, uh, chain across the huts and the steel that holds the dome over the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., came from the mines that are now polluted uh, by all these toxins. And so, what people need to understand is that all the myths and stories that they've heard about the Ramapo Lenape Nation and the Ramapo people are, are false. You know, we are the ones who are standing up in the, in the middle of the Ramapo Mountains along with Ramapo Conservancy, Ramapo College, fighting for the protection of millions of the New Jerseyans, you know, and uh, to protect the, protect the water for, for them as well. So, um, you know, people need to understand that they should be proud, right, that you have an indigenous tribe that is still here. We need everyone's support. You know, we still need to garner our federal, our federal recognition that would also help us to protect the citizens of New Jersey um, outside of our own people. Um, we're loving, caring, 
people in. You know, if, when you break down the side of the road, it's probably a Ramapo that stops to help you. We are here with Betty Prezi Bryant, who uh, leads an organization called Institute of Music for Children. You have grown over the last 20 or so years, just like the Rustbury Awards for Making a Difference. Tell us what your organization does and how it makes a difference. Well, we provide arts lessons to underserved children in the Elizabeth community. And it makes a difference because we make sure that children can afford to come to our classes. Who are these kids and why does it make so much difference? Many of them come to us from Elizabeth, Hillside, and surrounding communities, but we serve several different counties. And it makes a difference because many of their parents could not afford to put them in artistic classes if something like our program did not exist. So we have affordable tuitions for them, we offer scholarships, so that we can help children to pursue training in the arts. What does it mean to receive recognition by this foundation on the 20th anniversary? Uh, this is, it's something I never could have dreamed of anything like this. And when I read that it was for unsung heroes, I, I guess that really- That's you. That's me, that's me because I never want to be the person in front of the light. I want to be the person in the background moving things forward. So this is truly an honor for our organization to just be recognized for the work that we're doing. We're here with a good friend, Jack Fanus, from the GI Go Fund, um, one of the past honorees at the Rustbury Awards for making a difference. So you spoke here today. What does it mean to come back and also see these winners and be at this 20th anniversary event? It's, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, it's to be recognized, have my organization recognized for the work we do to help veterans is, was incredibly emotional and, and, and moving and inspirational. But to come back and see another generation of honorees, another group of honorees come up and, and hear what they're doing, it actually made me realize I don't think I'm even, I, I should never have gotten this award. I didn't deserve it. To see what everybody's doing up here, it's just incredible work and it's just, it's an incredible group to be a part of, an incredible uh, association to be with now the Russ Berry Award and to be one of these people, I, I tell you, Steve, I don't, I don't think I deserve it anymore. Yeah, but that's just not true, Jack. Uh, about your organization, you guys make a difference every day. Remind everyone, tell everyone what your organization is. is. We'll put your website up. Uh, we're the GI Go Fund. Uh, we're in uh, Newark, and we're uh, GIGoFund.org. Uh, you can visit us. We're, we're right now building a training center for veterans. Uh, I think the Russ Berry Award was instrumental in helping us build that. Uh, we're building a training center, never before seen in this country, a training center for veterans to train them for the workplace. We're getting partners from from corporations in Newark and and from from nonprofits. Uh, we're going to build an incubator space for six veterans to start small businesses, and we're moving forward to help veterans really transition home and start their lives over. That's what it's all about. When when my friend was killed in Iraq and the reason why we started the organization. From Rutgers. From Rutgers in 2004, Seth DeVorn. Uh, we started the organization to give back and to let veterans who made it home start their lives back, whether that be find health care, uh, find housing, but most importantly, find a job, because a job fixes all those problems. We're here at the uh, 20th anniversary of the Rustbury Awards for Making a Difference. Two very special people are joining us right now, Joe and Jane Clementi, um, the parents of Tyler Clementi, who um, People know the story, but they don't really know the difference that both of you chose to make after Tyler uh, committed suicide, uh, bullied, cyber bullied. Um, they know the media story. They don't really know why both of you decided to make a difference in the lives of so many others after that and try to fight this. Why did you? Well, we just really wanted to make sure that no one else would ever feel as humiliated or ashamed as Tyler did. Um, when he found out that he had been cyberbullied um, while in an encounter with another man. And then I think really what harmed Tyler most was the tweets and the posts on Facebook um, after the fact. That's what he kept going back to when he finally even left. When he, his last thing that he looked at when he left the, for the bridge that day were the posts on the Twitter feeds. That, um, so we really want to make sure that no one else ever feels humiliated and ashamed as Tyler did. We want to make a difference. And th this is such a beautiful event because this is doing the same thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to put an end to online and offline bullying in schools, workplaces, and faith communities, and, this, and trying to create a culture of kindness um, going further upstream, making kindness the, uh, what everyone wants to do. And here we're seeing people honored for all sorts of kindness. All what little or large, everybody's making a difference. And it takes many voices to make a difference and to create that culture. 
Do we all have a responsibility to really try to make a difference, as Russ always said, and Russ and Angelica. Angelica talks about that pebble and it ripples, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, and that's me. Someone has done it for me. Um, you know, way back when, when I had little hope, um, I trusted the process that those who came before me said, listen, just trust us and follow our lead. I did that, I'm here today, I'm alive. Not only that, I um, finished law school in 2010. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, and, and the whole object there was to help others um, who who needed that. Um, and so just as a new life, my life was given back to me by others, I'm trying to do the same. And isn't that what we're all about? Isn't that what we're here for, to make a difference? What's really moving to me and what inspires me to do the work that I do is when someone comes up to me and says, you changed my life, right? You changed my perspective. You made my experience at Princeton Day School, you made my experiences better because you allowed other people to see me, really see me. And that, when people tell me that our work has actually changed something in their life for the better, positively, that is why I do the work that I do. And having so many more people tell me that every day, every year, is what keeps me going. Because yeah, there are days when a lot of people aren't into it and a lot of people don't get it. But it's the days when people come up to you and say, thank you. Then sincerely Sincerely for the work that you're doing and sincerely for changing my life, it makes it worth it 10 times over. Finally, what do you say to the folks at the Russell Berry Foundation? I mean, I'm very grateful, very grateful to be here and to have this massive honor. I know that this foundation, this award has been going on for quite some time, recognizing some exceptional, extraordinary people. And I'm really blessed and grateful to be one of them. And I'm really excited to hear about all the amazing stories in this room alone. Were you surprised when you got the call from the foundation, hey, you're being recognized here? Yeah, you know what? You never do this for recognition at all. I'm, my goal is to help people, and it, it, it felt good, and, and I'm hoping that more people through this foundation, through the visibility, the bringing of the organization, will be inspired to hopefully feed more people in need. Let me ask you, when you, by the way, we're here at the 20th anniversary of the Russ Berry Awards for making a difference. When you heard these other stories of other people and the extraordinary things they've done to help others, what were you thinking and feeling? I shouldn't be on stage. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> you know, you, you get up there and, you know, this, I, I always say, you don't get into the nonprofit, into a nonprofit organization to make money. You get there to hopefully be able to help people. But to be up here and be inspired by everyone else's stories, it just pushes me to work harder because I know there's a lot of causes that deserve a lot of attention. And I'm just honored to be included up here today. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We are here with a good friend, Seth Grummet, who is the uh, head of an organization called Stomp the Monster, one of the winners here at the Raspberry Awards for Making a Difference. What is Stomp the Monster? Who's the monster? The monster is cancer. And the story behind that was my daughter found out when I was diagnosed. You were diagnosed with cancer? Oh, yeah. I had uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, two stem, stem cell transplants, bone marrow transplant from my sister who saved my life. So I, I, I met a lot of people when I was getting treatment on, during the chemotherapy, I'd sit next to them. And I found out there's a gentleman that couldn't walk his dogs. He's having heart attacks because he was trying to get to chemo. We found people that didn't have enough resources to get to their chemotherapy treatment. People couldn't pay their bills. So while I was going through treatment, um, I tried to help them personally. And then after that, one thing led to another and uh, you know, $1.2 million given out later. We've helped people pay their utilities, childcare, rent, anything, anybody that's going through cancer, they have financial burden. They're not as lucky as I am. I have a very, very good support system. Maybe they don't have the family that I did, and um, that's how it started. Why'd you do this? Why do you do it? It's the right thing to do, Steve. That's it, it's the right thing to do. Devil's advocate, why not just take care of yourself and your own health? I don't know. Maybe a flaw in my personality? It's not a flaw. Uh, maybe not a flaw, but um, same reason the Russ Berry Awards are doing their thing. It's to pay it forward and have a ripple effect and help as many people as we can. It's just kind of in my DNA. We are here with a true hero. Um, Russ Berry Awards for making a difference. Uh, this guy, I bet he never thought that he would be recognized or 
be here with us at the 20th anniversary. This is Danny Walls. Danny, um, tell us a story real quick. There was a six-year-old little boy that was attacked by a raccoon, and you were there, and you did what? I jumped out of the car, uh, went to my trunk. I grabbed a stick that I usually work with, uh, about a 30-foot pole. I came and I separated them. After I separated them, I seen that the raccoon wouldn't let him go. Uh, and I seen how vicious he was. After I seen that, I kind of like gave him a couple whacks to, you know, take some life out of him to let him go. And eventually he gave up and Arian was free. A little boy named Arian. Yes. Why'd you do this? It's, it's compassion. I mean, this is my instincts. I'm a parent. I love kids. There's no way I would walk past a, or go past any kid in danger, or any human life in danger, uh, and not do anything. You afraid for yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I know that at any point that raccoon could have came after me. That raccoon had rabies? Yes. I didn't know it at the time, but uh, I know that he was vicious. I know that he was vicious, and knowing that, I know that anything could have happened at that point. What do you feel being here today with everybody else being recognized for what they do? I feel honored, uh, like everybody else, excited, you know, motivated. You know, I think that this motivates anybody who was, uh, had any kind of impact in some kind of way to help someone else. I think that this motivates me to continue to do something else. We are here with our friend Connie Mercer, who heads up an organization called Homefront. Uh, Homefront is... Homefront takes care of homeless families. Tonight we will make sure that 450 people, most of them children, have a safe, dignified place to lay their head and then to move on to a better future. Why is it so important that we recognize the unsung heroes, as Russ Berry said, at the Making a Difference Awards? Oh gosh, because what we do is so hard and knowing that the community backs us and is there rooting to make sure that we succeed makes such a difference in our ability to keep on fighting the hard fight. The music is playing, the uh, awards have been given out, and uh, this is the Rustberry Awards for making a difference, the 20th anniversary, and it is our honor to speak to the $25,000 winner of the Rustberry Award for making a difference. She is Faye Zeeland. Faye, um, you've been making a difference for a few years now? Yes, I have. Yep. Describe your work. Well, um, we work with families with AIDS. Um, we started out the home just for babies, but we have expanded uh, to a full-fledged social service agent. Where? We are in Newark, that's our base. Um, and then we have homes in Elizabeth, Jersey City, and Neptune in Monmouth County. How big and how bad is the need? The need is really great. Uh, you know, the good news is that we're not seeing uh, babies with AIDS like we did when we started. But we are, the, the epidemic continues. You started, it was 87? 85, we started our foundation and then we opened up the first home in, uh, in 87. Why'd you do it, Faye? We're parents. You, you, we, we love our children. And when you see children suffering, you take time, very little time, to think about your fears and what will happen if you do. And then you have to zero in on what will happen if I don't. But Faye, what did you know about HIV AIDS? You weren't an expert in the field. You just said what? We lost a friend, and we told him on his deathbed that we were going to work with families as a family and fight this disease. And I'm so glad that we did because we feel like we have him with us. We know that he's up there helping us. Is that really what triggered it? That was one of the things that triggered it. And then my husband has worked with people with substance abuse his whole life. Mm. And we said, my goodness, this is something that's gonna affect entire families. Um, and the name of your organization? It's the AIDS Resource Foundation for Children and we operate the St. Clair's Homes and St. Clair's Services. What does it mean to you to be recognized with such a significant award at the 20th anniversary of the Rustberry Awards for Making a Difference? You look shocked when, when I said your name. 
I, you know, this whole day, this whole day has been the, the positive energy that's in this. It's a good vibe here. It, it is. It is. What would you say to all those who say they want to make a difference and don't know how? One day at a time, one person at a time. Think about what makes you happy. Think about what feeds your soul and just share a little piece of that and see what happens. We're here with our friend Julia Quinlan. Julia uh, and her husband fought a heck of a fight. It's, it was 40 years ago that your daughter, Karen Ann Quinlan, was uh, in a hospital um, near death but surviving. And you and your husband made a decision to do what because it was so difficult? She was in a persistent vegetative state. And we made a decision to, uh, it was our own decision to ask to have her removed from what we considered extraordinary means, which was the respirator that we felt was just keeping her alive. And uh, thankfully, we had a wonderful Supreme Court Justice, Richard J. Hughes, and the decision was unanimous that Joe became guardian of his daughter. So that was 40 years ago. All the work that you've been doing, the hospice work, why is it so important to you? My Mary Ellen put it so beautifully, that's my daughter. And someone did ask her that question. And she said, we don't have Karen. I don't have my sister, but we have the hospice in her memory. Every time we think of, talk about, about hospice, we're talking about Karen. Finally, what did it feel like to be recognized with all these other really wonderful people? They really were. I mean, I, I was just impressed by what they did. And, you know, some of it, it just seems so simple, and yet it's so important. And it's, it's just wonderful. I'm so thankful that we are honoring people like that to know that volunteerism is a very, very important part of life. And uh, I'm glad that they recognize it. We have many volunteers in our hospice, and they are a very important part of our hospice. You were here last year as a winner. You're here this year. You didn't have to be. Why'd you come back? I think this is such a, an amazing award. It's such a... It's hard to describe what I feel. I'm so grateful to Rosemary Foundation because it has made a big difference in my life and my organization because people are not aware it's very difficult to establish and maintain a nonprofit organization. It takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication and support. And being nominated and being one of the winners, the honorees last year, it provided the credibility factor that someone else is looking into what we do and it's really making a difference. So I want to give back and it's great also to meet the new honorees like today. I was overcome with tears just hearing some of the stories. So I'm hoping to be, come back next year and many years to come because I need to, I enjoy meeting the people and what they do because it really opened up my eyes to realize that there's so many good out there and so many people are doing great things and I'm glad they're being recognized for it. We are uh, wrapping up here. Angelica Berry, the president of the uh, Raspberry Foundation, the 20th anniversary of this extraordinary event. Um, what do you think of today and the people we honor and recognize? When I see all these people who've been here 20 years ago, 18 years ago, 13 years ago, and you think of the multiplier effect. We spoke about that different times and how each of their efforts every year multiplied by 20 years, multiplied by so many of them doing all these different things. And it's such a rich, a very rich contribution that you can't ever quantify, you know, and everything to make it a better world. What more can I ask as a legacy for Russ? It's interesting, when Angelica was giving her closing remarks, she tried to quantify it. And you talked about how many. Let's, let's give people a sense of the 20 years of the Making a Difference Awards. How many, I'm putting you on the spot because it was in the script. Oh, you know, right? Go ahead. 334 winners, 2,700 nominees, 
And these were those who made the cut, you know, and there were much more nominees than the 2,700. So what you're building is you're building community, you're building a field, building a field, and it's a force field for good. Do you sometimes sit up at night thinking about all the possibilities? You don't think about it until it's in front of you and somebody says, you know what, I need this. Can you help me with this? Can you convene a small coffee for all of us who are doing this in the food sustainability business? And they have all the connections, but sometimes all they need is that little spark, you know? Somebody to bring other people who are interested in the same thing to listen to a few of them who are doing the same thing. And then you can lift the whole field, you know? 20 years later. 20 years later, who would have imagined what it's become and what it still has more to go, you know? More. Where do we go after this? Another 20 years, maybe. One-on-one <laughs> <laughs> -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Valley National Bank, Cone Resnick, Hackensack Meridian Health, NJIT, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, The Fidelco Group, and by ShopRite Supermarkets. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. I think at NJIT there are a lot of smart students. I came to NJIT for mechanical engineering because within state it's one of uh, probably the top three schools for engineering. It sort of creates a friendly competition where you know you can learn from them. It's a great academic school. I feel I'm being challenged, but at the same time I love the classes I'm taking. The atmosphere of being here is like a, being at an upstart company. It's that same kind of drive, that same kind of passion. 